Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, I'll show you the Diels Alder reaction mechanism, and then a quick trick to help you find the products without going through the mechanism, and to help you find the starting molecules when you're given a product. You can find my entire Diels Alder series along with a reaction guide and practice set by visiting my website LeiaForSci.com/DielsAlder. A Diels Alder reaction is a concerted mechanism for a cycloaddition reaction. The diels alder reaction happens when you have a diene and a dienophile reacting with just heat to form a cyclohexene. So let's break it down. The first thing we have is the diene. More specifically, this has to be a conjugated diene where the pi bonds are directly near each other. There are two forms that you'll see for the diene. The first form is called the S-trans. And that's when you have the molecule looking like a transalkene, except that instead of a pi bond with the two substituents coming out, you actually have the diene set up in the trans position, but there's a single bond between the two pi bound groups. But this is still significant because even though this bond here is technically capable of rotation, don't forget that in a conjugated system you do have resonance. And when you have the pi bond resonating, that locks the molecule into the S-trans system. In order to do the diels alder reaction, you have to have the S-cis system, which should remind you of a regular cis molecule where you have a pi bond and then the two substituents are attached on the same side. The S-cis is slightly less stable because the groups are too close to each other and that will raise the energy of the molecule. In order to convert from the S-trans to the S-cis, you need some heat. The heat will destabilize the molecule, interrupt the resonance enough to allow for that rotation to happen. But that works out nicely because the diels alder requires heat for the mechanism anyway, so as long as the molecule is capable of rotation, the heat will help turn an S-trans into an S-cis. The next thing we have is a dienophile, which as the name implies, diene loving. So if we have a diene, then the dienophile likes the diene and wants to react. This is the very simple form of the diene and dienophile, but typically you'll see the diene with electron donating groups, making it very electron rich, and the dienophile with electron withdrawing groups, making it electron poor, and that helps the two molecules come together and helps them want to react. This type of reaction is called a cycloaddition because it's a cyclic addition, we're forming a ring, and it's called a concerted mechanism because even though we draw the arrows individually, they all move at the very same time. To show this reaction, we'll start with one of the pi bonds on the diene and show it attacking the dienophile. And what we're doing here is actually forming a bond between the diene and the dienophile. So those purple electrons that used to be a pi bond now form a sigma bond. That means the carbon on the dienophile has too many bonds, so its pi bond is going to get kicked out, and that will form a bond between itself and the other end of the diene which means that this bond has to move because we have too many bonds on the lower carbon and that forms a pi bond between the two carbons that used to be part of the different pi bonds. The transition state of this molecule sort of looks like the resonance happening in a benzene ring because notice this looks like benzene with the three moving pi bonds and this is what you would see. These purple electrons are moving over the blue electrons are moving over, both of them starting as a pi bond, winding up as a sigma bond, and then this pi bond moves over and is still a pi bond. So you kind of see a circle of resonating electrons inside the diene and the dienophile. And the product is as follows. The former purple pi bond is now a sigma bond between the diene and dienophile. The former blue pi bond is also a sigma between the two molecules, and the former green pi bond now sits as a pi one position over, giving us the final product as a cyclohexene. Now many of the reactions you see will have more complex molecules, but if you can identify the position of that cyclohexene, you'll be able to put the pieces together for everything else. And that's the key. If you can recognize the pattern, and you can take your complex molecules and simplify it into the form that you see here, the entire complex reaction suddenly becomes very easy. And here's what you want to recognize. No matter what is on your diene, you want to identify the four carbons as follows. One, two, three, and four represent the four carbons that form the diene. 
where 1 and 2 is the first pi bond and 3 and 4 is the second pi bond. Reacting with that, we have the dienophile, which we'll label A and B. For the product, the pi bond moves over, so it's always going to wind up between carbons 2 and carbon 3, and that's how you identify where to start numbering. We have 1, 2, 3, and 4 connected to A and B. That's the pattern, 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, in a ring with a pi bond between 2 and 3. Before we take this trick further, I want to show you how to recognize the product without showing all the arrows. I want you to repeat after me. Break, make, break, make, break, make. Got it? Watch. Break a pi bond, make a pi bond. Break a pi bond, make a single bond. Break a pi bond, make a single bond. And that's your product, as you can see right over here. We'll use this pattern again when we have a product and we're trying to find the starting molecules. So we'll go back to the pattern, shrink that down, and that will be a little key that we'll use as a trick for solving more complex molecules. And again, we're always going to look for the pattern. So let's say you find yourself faced with a molecule that looks like this. We have six carbons in a chain with two pi bonds. We have our diene, and it's in the S trans position. And we want to react that with a molecule that has a pi bond and a carbonyl at the end. First, we want to know what's our diene and what's our dienophile. The diene tends to have electron donating groups, making it more likely to attack something. Methyl groups on either end of the diene qualifies as the electron donating groups, and the dienophile wants to have electron withdrawing groups. If you have a carbonyl capable of resonating onto the oxygen atom, the carbon of the carbonyl is going to have its electrons pulled away, making that partially positive. That means the electron withdrawing group makes the dienophile partially positive, making this an ideal reaction. So here's what we're going to do. We'll take our starting molecule and set it up just like we have the key, where the diene faces the right side of the page, and we plug that in. That's all we're starting with, not the entire molecule, just the diene, and then we number 1, 2, 3, 4. Once we have the numbering in, we fill in what's left. We have a methyl group on carbon 1 and a methyl group on carbon 4. We'll do the same thing for the dienophile, starting with a pi bond for A and B, like we see over there. So we have A and B. Attached to it, we have a carbonyl, and in this case, it doesn't matter top or bottom because this molecule is symmetrical. In a later video, I'll show you how to take into account the stereochemistry and how to set up asymmetrical molecules. So randomly attached to B, I'll put the aldehyde, and we're ready to go. We put the reaction arrow with heat. Now here's the best part. I don't want to look at my starting molecule when I come up with a product, because the starting molecule has substituents, which will just confuse me. Instead, I go to my little key and draw a cyclohexene. Once I have the cyclohexene, I'll fill in the numbers. 1, 2, 3, and 4, because the pi bond's always between 2 and 3, followed by A and B giving me the ring. We have the starting product, and now we look back at the starting molecule. Carbons 1 and 4 both have methyl groups, so we give them their groups. A and B have an aldehyde attached at B, so we'll put the group right there. And here's our product. Again, in this reaction, we're not showing stereochemistry because I want you to focus specifically on the trick. Now let's say you're given a product and you're asked to find the starting diene and dienophile that gave you this product. Once again, we're going to refer to our little key and use that as a trick to identify what's going on. We're looking for a cyclohexane with a pi bond between 2 and 3. Our molecule has a six-membered ring, but there are two pi bonds. How do you know which is which? We have to analyze each pi bond and determine if it has an electron donating or withdrawing groups and recognize that the diene has electron donating groups and the dienophile would have electron withdrawing groups. We have two esters on the pi bond on the right. Esters have carbonyl carbons which when they resonate are partially positive making them electron withdrawing and that means the one on the right is more likely part of the dienophile and not the diene. So we know the pi bond on the left has to be from the starting diene, and we'll number accordingly. 1, 2, 3, 4, A and B. Remember the pattern I showed you of break, make, break, make, break, make? We're going to do the exact same thing here, starting by breaking the pi bond between carbons 2 and 3, because we know that has to move. So we break a bond, make a bond, break a bond, 
make a bond, break a bond, and make a bond. Notice that because we already had one pi bond, A and B will actually come from an alkyne because the Diels-Alder reaction only breaks one pi bond. So if we start with a triple bond and break one, we still have a double bond in the product. Another way to recognize this is that you have to cut between 4 and A and B and 1 because 1, 2, 3, 4 is part of the diene, A and B is part of your dienophile. So we'll start with the diene. All we have is 1, 2, 3, and 4, nothing else. So I have a standard starting molecule. For the dienophile, we'll start with A and B. Recognize that we have to put two bonds for the alkyne and then we have an ethyl ester on either end, so we'll just add that in here. And these are our starting molecules. So now what happens if your starting molecule has a ring in it, or worse, your ending product is a bicyclic compound? How do you treat it then? That's exactly what we'll look at in the next video, which you can find along with the Diels Alder reaction guide and practice problem set by visiting my website, layerforsci.com slash Diels Alder. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.